I kind of started a little bit of a, a series last Sunday. If you were here last Sunday, uh, and it was kind of um, interesting, uh, it's, and it's just about the culture in which we live. It's, this has been happening for uh, years and years and years and years. Um, the truth versus lies. The world, world doesn't like the truth. So they try to change the truth. They, they like lies, and they try to, if, they, if, you know, if you say something enough, it actually becomes, it can become a truth to you. You know what I mean? Um, so basically, this is how the enemy works. This is how the devil works. He, he's a liar from the beginning, and he's lied to all of mankind. That's how he deceived Adam and Eve. And so what's happening in our world, and has been happening a long time, you know, like, um, and that is that there's, there's the powers that be, if you want to say it like that, there are, there, there's, there's forces out there, there's, there's people out there in the world that want to control societies. They want to control the world. They want to, to make it a one world kind of government. Anybody ever heard of that before? You ever heard about the one world government thing? Okay, so, um, and I believe it's true. It's not a conspiracy theory. Uh, it's, it's none of that. It actually, is, it is? No? Yes? No, I, you know. Uh, I, I said last week that if I was to tell you in 2019... All the things that were going to happen in 2020, you would have laughed at me. You would have said I was a crackpot, that I was wearing a tinfoil hat, okay? I was going to tell you, you had to be self, you had to distance yourself from other people, you couldn't go into other states, you couldn't go into other countries, uh, and if you did travel into another country or a state, you'd have to be locked down in a motel room, whether you were sick or not, for two weeks before you could come out. And I should tell you, everything that happened in 2020, but I told you that was going to happen in 2019, you would have laughed at me. But in 2020, you would have gone, you were right. And I would have said, I told you so. Correct? Well, what if I was able to have a crystal ball, and, and we don't have one, and I don't have one, so I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I can see things happening, and I can see things, and the cultural relevance that's happening in our world, it's constantly going on. It's constantly hammering at us. It's constantly preaching at us. There's another message out there, and it's not this message. It's not this gospel message. It's another message that's being preached to the people of this world, and it's preached to Christians like you and I. Through the media, through the TV, through, through, through schools, everything. And so what's happening is it's becoming more and more prevalent in our world today. Now, Paul stated that this is what's going to happen. This is what happens to a culture. Listen to what I'm saying. This is what happens to a culture when they reject God. When a culture rejects God or pushes God out of the equation of their lives, out of the equation of their government, this culture will downfall. It will fall down. It, will, it won't last. Rome destroyed itself from the out, inside, not the outside. They weren't defeated from the outside. Rome was defeated from the inside. Most cultures without God are defeated from within because they, they keep becoming more and more corrupt. They're becoming more and more evil, and they, they, they propagate their message over and over and over and over again. You know, if you repeat something enough, you start to actually believe it to be true. It's an amazing thing that happens to us. We become brainwashed. It's easy to do. Churches have done it. 
Religion does it. Yes? So, um, um, and, and definitely, governments in our world do it. They're trying to control. They're trying to, to, to own people. They're trying to, you know, there's all kinds of things going on in the world today. And so, how they create their culture is through different means. And we're going to talk about a couple of them some more this week. Uh, um, and I'll just go through some more. But why don't we just, um, I, I didn't read this last time, and I, I just didn't want to uh, run out of time. And I'll probably run out of time again today. But that's okay, isn't it? Because next time I preach, you can hear me some more of it, right? Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 1. This is Paul speaking about uh, uh, some past, um, he's actually talking about some past civilizations, and, and a lot of scholars believe that he's actually referring to the antediluvian uh, culture, which was before the flood. But this is relevant to every culture that turns away from God, exchanges truth in for a lie. You catch that? What the world does, if they exchange the truth in for a lie, they start to believe the lie, they start to embrace the lie, and they reject the truth. And in fact, the truth becomes not normal anymore. Have you ever noticed that something that's very, very true is told to you and me that it's not true? They want to convince us that something that is blatantly true is not true. And I'll show you something in a minute to, to just back up what I just said. Okay, let's read this real quick. And we'll, we'll try to go through this quickly and, and uh, we'll, we'll go down to a certain point and then I'll, I'll show some videos and talk some more. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress what? The truth in unrighteousness. So in other words, they, they, they put away, they suppress, they push it down, the truth. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. From since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. Would you all agree with that? Yes? being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and godhood, so that they are without excuse. Did you know mankind is out without excuse? So what, what we try to do and what the world tries to do is put God out of the equation. They don't want God in the equation of their lives because then they don't have to be responsible for their lives, okay? And so, but they can't do that because one day they're going to stand before him. Uh, uh, everything is seen, clearly seen. Uh, we are without excuse. Mankind is without excuse. Let's go on. Because although they knew God, what did they do? They did not glorify him as God. Okay? Nor were thankful, but become futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened. How many of you know it always starts in the mind? Okay? I, I, if you, you and I are planning for our future, or, or, or there, there are religions out there, there are uh, cultures out there, there are, are all kinds of governments and countries out there, and, and rulers and all kinds of stuff, that what they do is they propagate, they, they preach to you their message so that you will actually begin to think the way they want you to think. Hitler did that before the Second World War. You all understand that, right? Every culture throws away information. Unfortunately, We've got too much information easily accessible in the world in which we live. So I don't believe it's ever going to happen to the same degree. But can you imagine a whole country like Germany 
believed Hitler that they were the super race. It was all propagate. It was all all preached to them, for a series of, through the schools, through education, everything was preached to them to the point where they actually believed to the point where they would go and kill people, and take over other countries. Okay, it starts in the thoughts. Correct. Professing to be wise, they actually became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like incorruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. In other words, they made other things idols. Other than worshiping God, they made idols to worship. Our world makes all kinds of things idols that we worship. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. Now, in this passage of Scripture, in these passages of Scripture that we're going to read and finish reading, um, it says over and over again that God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. So what God does is he goes, okay, is that the way you want to live your life? Yes, this is the way we want to live our life. He goes, okay, I give you up to it. Do whatever you want. Go for it. Do whatever you want to do. I'm not going to stop you. I will give you over to it. I give you up to it, and off you go. In the lust of their hearts, dishonoring their bodies among themselves. So what happens is that's exactly what mankind does. Actually, uh, yeah, we'll read this one, and then we'll, 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 we'll stop there, and I'll show some videos. And exchange what? The truth of God for the lie. And worshiped and what? Served the cre- cre- uh, creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. This is how it begins to happen. Last week, uh, uh, let, me, let me say this first. Um, one, of the, one of the things that has been moving in a certain direction for a very, very, very long time in the culture in which we live, in the world in which we live, and that is this, is that it's character, characterized by easily, easy and quick offenses. Right? I know that I've probably offended people over the years. I, well, actually, no. I don't think I've offended anybody over the years. <clears throat> oh, yes, you have. And, and, and let me tell you why I've probably offended people. If you know me personally, and I think most of you know me fairly well by now, most of you, you know that I'm a pretty nice guy, right? What's that? Propaganda again. Okay. But let me just say this, that there are things that I have preached over the years from this book that probably have offended people. Because let me say this, this is the standard by which we live. This is the standard by which the world should be living. I, I'm not the creator God's the creator. He created all of us and he created mankind to live by certain rules and regulations and by a standard that he's created. When we violate those standards, we are asking for trouble. Okay? So, so what begins to happen is that, and it, it runs completely cross-grain to the world in which we live. Doesn't it? <laughs> and, and I've said some things over the years. Hopefully not recently. But no, over the years. That is based upon the Bible. And we're going to read some more stuff today. That if you're offended by it, I'm sorry, but it's God's word. And it's his truth. 
Okay? I'm not apologizing for that. Yeah, that's definitely true. Thank you, Claire. She's, she's with me all the way. Thank you, Claire. High five. There you go. Okay. But what's happening in our world is it's being preached to us all the time. Homosexuality is being preached all the time. Ads on the TV. I don't care if you want to be with a man, a man wants to be with a man, or a woman wants to be with a woman. That's okay. Go for it. Okay, well, I didn't ask for any, any input, but if that's the way. And that's okay. We can, people can live their lives however they want to live their lives. But don't you tell me that I have to accept that. I love you as a person. I love you as a person. But I don't like what you do. That's offensive. People are scared to say that today. Right? There's a couple in the States that refused to, they they said to a homosexual couple that were going to get married, they came into their, their bakery and they said to them, they said, listen, we want you to bake a cake for us. They, they said, we'll bake you a cake, but we will not write on the cake what you want us to write on the cake. Because we don't agree with it. That's our, our stand. That's us. They were taken to court, and they lost their business. They were sued and lost, their, lost, lost in the court of law. Because the world sided with them. So you know what that does? It scares everyone to say anything that is true. We back down. And so everybody's so easily offended. Jesus said, there will be offenses in this world. People will offend you. Get over it. Yeah, let, me, let me just say something. Did you know facts the truth and facts, don't care about your feelings. The truth doesn't care about your feelings. It just doesn't. You know, feelings are now more highly valued than objective truth. We can't talk about what is normal. This is forbidden. It's forbidden. Being a heterosexual, whatever that may be, and living a normal relationship, having a normal relationship and a normal life. That is actually forbidden nowadays. They do not want you to say those things. Normal is forbidden because it carries with it. Did you know normal carries with it a standard? To say something... uh, is normal is to say there is an objective standard of truth by which we should all be living by. There is right, there is wrong. There's good, there's bad. There's nothing in between. Yeah? Right and wrong. And so we're we're scared to say that's wrong, that is wrong, for fear of offending somebody. But let me tell you something. I really genuinely believe that when you speak the truth in love, because the Bible does say that, speak the truth in love. Now, I'm not talking about we go out there and we, you, you know, because that's what we do a lot of times as Christians. Sometimes we, we but, but before we go sprouting off our mouths sometimes and offending everybody, let's, let's, Get to know that person first. You know, I have a couple of friends that are, that are gay, um, and I've spoken to them very clearly. I, I don't agree with what you do. I love you. You're my mate. I've known you for most of my life, but I don't agree with what you do. And they've received it. It's okay. It's all good. In, in sport, well, let's do this. Go ahead and show, show a clip. 
there was recently a story about a 52-year-old father of seven who now self-identifies as a six-year-old girl. What do you think of that? Man, I think it's interesting. I've actually never heard of someone identifying as a different age. I guess I shouldn't, you know, judge, you know, because everybody, you know, has their own, like, identity and stuff. It's liberated me, and I don't have to act my age. And by not acting my age, I don't have to deal with the reality that was my past. I don't have to think about adult stuff. I still drink coffee and drive a car, right? Even my tractor, but I still drive the tractor as a little kid. I drive my car as a little kid. Our culture is so unwilling to define boundaries, so afraid of being perceived as judgmental, that they won't even recognize simple traits like age, sex, or skin color as unchangeable. If I were to say, I feel black, does that make me black? It, not necessarily, it, it doesn't. I believe you just are what you are. I don't think you really become or be anything. I don't think so because that's a biological law. There should be a difference between mental state and biological appearance. If a 65 pound woman came up to me and said, I'm fat, the kind, compassionate thing to do is to help her see herself in a way that conforms to reality. So is there any limit to what somebody can self-identify as? If you can find the resources to be the thing you want to be, you can do that. We're not, we're not ready for that. We are just now um, becoming more aware of social issues in regards to how you identify. If I identify as a 65-year-old, can I draw Social Security? If I say I feel like a Native American, do I qualify for Native scholarships? If I identify as a paraplegic, can I get one of those little handicap decals from my car? The real problem is that people don't want to deal with reality. I was never allowed to be a little girl, so I'm filling that tank of little girl experiences. It's easy, it's innocent. It's like, just play. Everything becomes a game. Everything I imagined couldn't happen is happening. He's feel sorry for that guy. Uh, it's not, it's not, and I didn't show that to hurt anybody or upset you or anything like that. I'm just trying to say, this is where we've gotten to. There's no boundaries. There's nothing out there anymore. You can be whatever you want to be, and we can't offend them. We can't say, no, you, you, you're not a six-year-old girl. You're, you're a 55-year-old man who has responsibilities because you have seven children that you've left behind. That's tragic in the world in which we live, but people are accepting this. Not only are we accepting this, but now we're pushing for this to actually be accepted, but we're also pushing for it to be in children. Children can become whatever they want to become. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I didn't know what I was. Well, I actually did. I did know what I was. <laughs> Don't say that too loud. <laughs> all good. All good. But you, you know what I mean. You know, you, you're a kid. You're growing. You're maturing. You're going through all kinds of cycles in your life. Yeah, you know, I was like, whoa, whatever, you know. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a very sad thing that's happening in the world in which we live. Now, next one. Yeah, video. You like this? You don't want any more? No, uh, this one's good. Um, excuse me. Um, excuse you me. Photo of Would us? you mind yeah, taking a no photo problem. of us? Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Okay, everybody okay, say cheese. Everybody say cheese. Oh, I'm actually, oh, I'm, I'm, actually vegan. I'm a vegan. Can you please, have us, you please have us say something else? Okay, everybody say. <laughs> okay, everybody say. Tofu, tofu. is actually not as tofu good, for you, not as good for you as vegan. Any cost for your testosterone? Bad for your testosterone, bad for your testosterone okay, level. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. How about we all just smile? How about we all just smile? One more oh, asshole asked me to smile. Not really an asshole. Taking a photo for you. I said to smile about it. I said to smile about it anyway. Okay. Would you like me to just count backwards from three? Would you like dyslexic people to just not exist? I can't answer. 
dyslexia, and so Adopted. offended. Adopted. Don't even know who my cousins are. So more offended. So more offended. How about offended. this? We all put a word we're comfortable with in our heads, in our heads and I'll no, get the shot. No, it doesn't sound very inclusive, though, does it? I suppose you'd like us all to stand a few metres apart, would you, Starlin? Jesus Christ. I don't see what religion has to do with this. Well, I'm an atheist, so majorly triggered. Is that a comment on the gun debate? Still trying to control people. But it's not just the people. Has anyone thought about the animals? This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Everybody throw up a peace sign and I'll take a photo. Wow. Cultural appropriation is alive and well. Why don't you just ask us to say Kung Fu? Guess what? New plan. Group selfie. Ready, set, go. Boom. And looks awesome. You're going to love it. Nice to meet you. You took it with the front camera. You took it with the front camera, you stupid cyclist. I showed that. I showed that because that's how easily we're offended. That, that is the world that we're living in. I know that was a little bit extreme, but have you ever said something to somebody and they just was like, oh, that, oh, 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 oh. You know, I thought that was great and appropriate to kind of say that, that the world in which we live is so offended, so easily offended that, that we don't say anything at all. We just go, oh, I'll take a picture, get out of here. Crazy. Crazy. Next one. I, I, I do feel red. red. That any any anti-imperialist anti who blocks ours must, must reflect, reflect like such a divergence of interest within his housing. Agree, agree. Yeah, yeah. I think Judith's point of view is very valid, right? Provided, provided the movement, the movement never, never forgets, never forgets that, it that it is the inalienable right of right every man, man or, or, woman, or, or woman, woman to rid himself or herself. Or herself, or herself, or herself agree. agree. Thank you, Baba. Or sister. Or sister. Where was I? I think you finished. Oh, right. I want, I want to have, to have babies. babies. You, you want, want to have babies? babies? It's every, it's man's, every man's right, right to, have to have babies if he wants them. them. But, but you can't, can't have babies. babies! Don't, Don't you oppress me. me. I'm not oh, oppressing you, Stan. I'm not a fool. Where's the fetus going to gestate? Are going to keep it in the box? You have no idea. Suppose you agree that you can't actually have babies, not having a woman which is nobody's fault, not even the Roman. But then they can have the right to have babies. Good idea, Judith. We shall fight the oppressors for your right to have babies, brother. Sister, sister, sorry, sorry. What's the story? What? What's the story? Point of fighting for his right to have babies when he can't have babies. It is symbolic of our struggle against oppression. Symbolic of his struggle against reality. Yeah, how, how long ago was that? Was that the 70s? Can you, can you believe that? We're going back to the 70s with that. You, you know, like, it's, it's, it's in every, it's in, it's in the media, it's in television, it's in movies, it's constantly in your face. That, that, now, What's happening is this, is that the powers that be, and I'm going to show another clip here in a minute, but the powers that be, as it would be, um, that are trying to change this world into something that they think is idyllic and, and, and purposeful, what they're trying to do is create this other world. So they have to take God out of the equation. They have to, they have to destroy all of that. Because they don't want you and me and our sovereignty of who we are. God created us. Pure and simple. This is how easy it is. God created us 
in his likeness and in his image. But he created us male and female. Because they have different roles in life. Just like Monty Python just showed you. Okay? He can't have babies. That's the purpose of this. So that we would be fruitful and multiply and increase throughout the earth. And so every time you strip away that truth, you are destroying the fabric of society. And you're destroying the actual essence of why God created us. And you create confusion. It's a lie. Now, I know that every person here today, I'm singing to the choir. I, I, I hope I am, anyhow. So I know that you'd go, yeah, 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 we, yeah, we agree. We agree. But the only reason why I'm trying to show you this is because it's crept even into the church where we just start to accept things that are just not normal, not right, not truth. And then it also t- t- gets us to the point where we go, I cannot confront that. I cannot talk about that. I cannot, you know, deal with that in the proper way. Because I'm going to offend somebody, and I could get sued. I could go to court. I could, whatever might happen. It's a fearful thing, isn't it? Right? You know, um, But let me just say this. The gospel actually is, sometimes it's offensive. It's the good news, but it's offensive. Because it's about a kingdom. It's about the kingdom of God and how the kingdom of God is established. It's it's his nation. It's his country. We didn't vote Jesus in. It's not a democracy. The kingdom of God is not a democracy. It's not even a Republican republic. It's actually a, uh, 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 it's a kingdom with a king. And the king was never elected to become the king. He was always the king. And because he's the king, he sets the rules. He sets the boundaries. And when people begin to worship the king and live for the king... They need to live by those rules and regulations too. Amen? Not only that, but then we begin to establish that. And we should be going wherever we go. We should be trying to establish that in the places where we live and work and play. Correct? Um, and so, just establishing that. You know, the unfortunate thing is, is that just, just, just this week... We've got the Olympic Committee. Just put that picture up if you want. Just put that picture up. This week, there's, there's, been, there's been a boxing match. Now, now I've read up on all of this because I really wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to say something wrong about this guy, uh, this person in the red. So, so he was born, they say... I, I, every, every news commentator I looked at, every, every bit of article, I, I, I typed in saying, was he born a male or a female? Now they're saying he was born... Okay, okay, but his private parts are not male. Okay? If I can say that. But he's XY. What's XY? Male. XX is female. That's his, that's his biological makeup. But the, but the IOC, the, 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 the Olympic Games Committee, they are allowing transgender people to go into different sports, if that sports allows them to. So in 40 seconds, he beat the Italian girl. 
punched her twice in the face, and, and, and basically she bowed out because she couldn't compete between the masculine XY and she's XX. So, but they're all, they're all trying to explain it away. They're all trying to excuse it away as being okay. So, so I, I go, well, if she's got XY, too much testosterone in her system, well, then <laughs> that's what she was, and that's what she is. So this is a mental thing, not a moral thing, not a biological thing. It's all here. People are saying, I'm, I'm okay here. This is what I am here. But they're not. It never will be. Because I want to have children. You're never going to have children. <laughs> are, are you catching what I'm saying? What's the truth here? I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be nasty. I'm just, just trying to tell the truth. And so, so in shot put, let me, let me just explain this like this. In shot put, in the men's sports, they throw a 16-pound ball in shot ball, in, in, in shot put. You know the game shot put. 16 pounds is the Olympic size for a man throwing a ball. Now, it's incredible, some of the records that they can throw, that ball, it's, it's amazing. Females only throw a 12-pound ball. They don't throw a 16-pound ball. Because everybody's recognized that in shot put, a woman's not a man. Originally, throughout all of our history of time, <laughs> So if a woman goes into shot put, a man goes into a, a shot put in a woman's category, how many of you know she's going to win every time? Because she's now, he, he, she is throwing now a ball that's 12 pounds, not 16 pounds. Now, I don't know about you, but that's just not right. Everybody loves my controversy, don't they? Okay. The Italian girl had to apologize to the girl in red. Oh, well. Yeah. Very sad. Very sad. Very said. Let's move on. Show the next video clip. A lot of people asking why. Why does the media lie so much? Why'd COVID happen? Why are movies bad? Why are they remaking the same thing over and over again? Why are there so many trans people all of the sudden? Why are all the children gay? Why all the anti-white rhetoric? Why all the racial division? Why can't I afford a house anymore? Why are all of these things happening all at once? There is an answer to this. There is a singular cause of all of these issues, of all of these problems. It's called globalism, an unelected, corporate, supranational government that is unquestionable, whose dictates are not democratic in the slightest, but rather for the sole benefit of those at the top, and whose policies exclusively hurt the middle class. The ultimate goal is that not only will these people operate in a neo-feudal global fascistic technocracy, but they'll do it forever. There's a reason why everything that's being done is in one direction. You destroy your sovereignty, destroy your strength, destroy your faith, destroy your family, destroy your economic ability. It's all being destroyed on purpose, by design, with an end in mind. Did you catch that? There's a purpose. Isn't it interesting that in 2020, the whole world was locked down? Not just one country. Literally the whole world. To me, that was amazing. Yet the whole world wasn't being affected by it. We had one guy come into our state who had it. We shut the whole state down. Can, can you believe that? 
I mean, and we all went for it. We all followed it. The economy right now is just crazy. Housing, interest rates. Do you know interest rates are cumulative? Okay? So over the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, interest rates have been going up and up and up. But all we hear about interest rates are that it's gone up a half a percent or it's gone up 1.5 percent. But that's, that's only because it's, 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 it's here now, but it's already to this point here. I'll show you something in a minute that actually explains it better than what I've just done. Why is that happening? Why is that happening? Why did that happen in 2020? Like if I had a crystal ball and I could tell you what's happening next year, I, I wish I could see what's happening next year. <laughs> could be. But if, if he doesn't, but, but at the same time, most people in the world, other than Christianity, has a, what's called an end times view. Okay? Most governments in the world, most other religions in the world, other than Christianity, have a what's called an eschatology. Does anybody know what eschatology means? It means the study of end times, last days, end of, end of the world. Okay? Most Christians believe that we're going to be going through something really, really bad. The world's going to get worse and worse and worse. And then we're going to, Jesus is going to come back and it's all going to, he's going to fix up everything. That's what we, they believe. All right? And that's okay if you believe that. That's cool. I'm okay with that. But let me tell you something. Really nobody else believes that. Communists don't believe that. Communists believe that they're going to take over the world and control the whole world. Communists are socialism, which com becomes communistism, is in our world today and in our country. We're kind of a semi-socialist country. Okay? You okay with that? You understand that? And their goal is to completely control you and me. Have complete control of everything that you own, everything that you have. I don't believe it's ever going to happen, but because they're constantly preaching that to us, we are accepting it. We're folding to it, just like we did in 2020. We just followed them. Yep, amen, that's, that's fine. Not only that, but uh, um, um, Islam believes they're going to take over the world. That this world is theirs. And they're going to take over the world. So you know what they do? That's exactly what they go and do. So, so in the West, the culture, the Christian culture, most of the West is Christian kind of culture. America, Australia... Yeah, New Zealand, yeah, right, okay. We kind of go, Christians kind of sit back and go, well, yeah, it's getting bad. I suppose it's, Jesus is going to come back soon and rescue us all. And so we're waiting for that. That's what we're doing. And that could be true. I'm not saying it's not. You okay with that? But all I'm saying is that if he's, going to come back and rescue us, and that'll be great, wonderful, fix everything up. What if he doesn't? Then we're still sitting back waiting for that to happen. And guess what? The cultures of the world, whatever they are, they're infiltrating into us. They're becoming stronger 
and more powerful and more controlling, and we aren't controlling anymore. The countries that were God birthed and were established under this standard and these principles, they prospered. They made the world what it is today. Okay? But not now. The world out there is taking over and controlling everything. Christians were the first people to create hospitals. We have one here in Midland called St. John of God. Where did that come from? Christianity. Most of your funding and your overseas help for the world all came from missionaries and Christians who gave and prospered. America was founded on Christian principles. Australia actually was too. That's right. But we're not that now. Because we haven't been on the forefront of creating the culture in which we need to be living in. They're creating it. Okay? They have an agenda. They have an agenda. And it is to take over and destroy lives. I know you probably... Some of you have heard this before, and that's okay. I'm just, I'm just trying to throw it out there, okay? A couple more videos, and then I'm done. Energy runs the world. So this guy Biden, his first act was to cut the, Canadian, you know, the, the Keystone Pipeline from Canada to America. When he cut that, I was selling oil at $30 a barrel. The moment Biden came into office, and oil went from 30 to 130 now, I almost voted for Biden over that. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm making a fortune. But I knew what that socialist was doing. He was making inflation go through the roof to bankrupt the poor and middle class. He, Biden's a criminal. Watch what a person does, not what they say. Okay, so, so what happened in America when Biden got in power, President Trump had actually made... They, they had a, a pipeline, an oil pipeline, that went from the Gulf of Mexico all the way to Canada. We had, America had their own oil. So we weren't buying it from the Middle East. And we were refining it, and we were doing it all. There created jobs and lots of jobs, and America was prospering. But the media, the normal media, never told anybody that. Because Trump's a psycho. Are you with me? I'm, I'm not running for politics in America right now. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Okay? One side is the left, and one, si left <laughs> and one side is the right. Okay? This one side, the right, has more Christian principles going on it, right? Whether they're Christian or not, at least they have some Christian principles. The left has none of them. It's all socialistic. So he stopped the pipeline. He, he actually stopped it. So now we had to go and buy oil from overseas because he wanted to bankrupt America, the middle class and the lower class. Let me tell you something. In four years, that's exactly what he's done. So the economy is messed up. Our country is the same. Trying to bankrupt our country. Bankrupt the world. Is everybody okay? No, I'm sorry. I know, it's hard. I'm sorry. If, 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 you've never, if you've never seen this before or heard this before, I know it's a shock. It's absolutely a shock. And I don't mean to be slapping you in the face with it. But I think I would rather you awake and know what the truth actually is and, 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 and just, because you know what? It could happen again. It could all happen again. And what are we going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
You going to make a stand against it? You know, I, I will. I'll, I'll tell you right now, I will. I will make a stand against it. If I go to jail, I'll go to jail. Wouldn't bother me. Because some things are more important than other things. There was a guy in Germany, he was a pastor in Germany, and he basically, uh, um, he made a stand. His name is Bonhoeffer, he's a minister. Made a, uh, made a stand against Hitler. He didn't agree with everything that was going on. Made a stand, and they actually ended up taking him and putting him in jail, and they killed him. That's what they did. Now, back then, they didn't have the media that we have today. That can't happen the same. Okay? Countries can't do that the same. Um, but everything's going that way other than the countries that are not letting it go that way. Have you noticed that? Okay? We follow along. Okay, well, maybe, maybe I don't. Uh, did we show the Car Carlson one? Um, 40, no, 45. Are you okay to watch two more? And then I'll close with it. Sorry, Cheryl. I'll give you a really big hug later, okay? All right. I'll give you, okay. Okay. Next one. If anyone ever says to you they had 14% interest rates back in the 1980s, show them this. In 1980, in Melbourne, the median house price was $39,500. And the median salary was around $13,500. So if you wanted to buy a house at the median of $39,500, you would have a 20% deposit of around $7,900. And now we've got an extra $2,000 for things like stamp duty and conveyancing fees. So with a 14% interest rate, your monthly repayment would be $374, which across a year would be 33% of your gross income. Now I would take those 14% interest rates if our house prices were only 2.93 times the median salary. So if it was the same as 1980, the median house price would be $198,000, which means a 20% deposit is around $39,800 and we've budgeted around $7,000 for settlement costs. So with those same 14% interest rates, your monthly repayment is $1,886, which again is 33% of your gross income. But let's actually look at reality. The reality is in Melbourne, the median house price is around $950,000, which is 14 times the median salary. This means a 20% deposit is almost three times your salary. And on top of that, we need an extra $55,000 for stamp duty and settlement costs. Now with today's interest rate at 6.24%, your monthly repayment is around $4,669. And that is a massive 82% of the median salary in Melbourne. So someone with a median salary can definitely not be purchasing a median home in this city. Can you buy a house in Melbourne? Can't buy a house here. Last six months, it's gone crazy. I spoke to somebody just yesterday or the day, be no, it was the day before, and they were telling me that they sold their house and she made $40,000 more when she sold her house that she was expecting to make because people are fighting to buy a house and they, they all go in bidding and she said, I made $40,000 more and she, she doesn't have a flat, big flash house. She just has this, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, people are, if you sell your house now, you can make some money, but then you've got to buy something else that you probably can't afford. I, I mean, I'm just, all I'm saying is that, that why are all these things happening? The reason why this guy said these things are happening, to destroy our sovereignty. You and I are created in the image of God. We are created male and female, man and woman. They do not want you to identify as that anymore. They want you to identify, that's why they're preaching to you, transgenderism, LGBT, all this stuff, because they want you to identify as just a person. A thing, a person. Have you, have you heard that before? Are you hearing that more and more? You can't say male or female. You have to say person. I, I, listen to me. I'm a marriage celebrant, okay? I, and they've changed the notice of intention. They've changed everything on our forms, and it's called partner. 
They, they say partner. They don't say bride or groom anymore. You can identify whatever you want to identify is. And they're saying you can't make them say male or female. So, so it's your sovereignty, who you are. It's, it's a mess. They want to destroy your strength. So in other words, your strength is that whole thing about making a stand and standing in truth. So you back down now. You, you, you don't want to offend. You don't want to upset. You don't want to anything like that. And so what happens is that, that, that we, stop to lo- we lose our strength as a nation. We lose our strength as individuals. Correct? They want to destroy your faith. Church is being attacked. Why? Because we have a standard. Margaret Court made a stand. Got slammed. They wanted to take her name off of the court, courts over there in Melbourne, is it? You know, I'm thinking, what? They become, they, they think they're wise, but they become fools. Isn't that what we read? They want to destroy your family. Islam is about having lots of children so they can take over the world. Guess what? That's what they do. We don't want to have children anymore. They tell you have one or two at the, at the most. But they also are pushing all this other thing, so gay stuff, so that a man and a man can't have children. Got to have a woman. Two girls can't have a, have, a, have a child. So before we know it, we're going to have no population. It's all bringing, bring, and have you noticed that? We're just bringing as many people in from other cultures that we can, and those cultures are transforming this culture into a different culture. And they are breeding like rabbits. Okay? That's what's happening. Have I just opened some eyes? Have I turned the lights on? Did I turn the lights on for anyone? Okay. And they're destroying our economy. The reason why they're destroying our economy so that they can actually just begin to have you... If you have no money, if you have nothing to your possession, you will just ob- simply, simply yes and obey. You'll just follow. You'll do whatever they want you to do. And it's intimidating. It's the world we live in. Um, I'm not leaving you on much hope, am I? I... I just discovered that. I didn't mean to do that. I'd rather you awake than woke. Absolutely. Uh, um, My wife, Wendy, said, you're not going to preach another one of those sermons, are you, Steve? I said, I'm not sure what I'm going to preach, babe. And she says, oh, don't do it. We don't want to lose people from the church. We don't want to, we don't do it, don't do it, because we just, you know. But you know what? I just, I've thought about that, and I thought, I'd, I'd rather you awake and know what's going on and... And one day you'll, you'll be able to say, yep, he was right. He, yeah, thank you very much. He predicted it in 2019, what was going to happen in 2020. Da, 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 da. Maybe I'm predicting something, but I'm hoping and believing. You know what? I also do believe this, and I'll say this real quickly. And that is that I do believe that God allows man, as, he's, as we read in our scripture, he says, go for it. I'm giving you over to it. Go for it. You can go that way. But ultimately, God says, enough is enough. I'm stepping in. And what he does is he finds a group of people 
or he finds a man who will stand in the gap, who will actually stand up and do the right thing and create change. Have a look up uh, at the president of, of El Salvador. Everybody gets to go home and have a look at El Salvador. Okay, this president in El Salvador in, in four years has turned his country around from being the most violent country in the world to the most blessed. And I think he's a Christian man because he talks about praying before he makes decisions. And so what he actually did, he had to become almost like a dictator to go in there because it was so bad. He incarcerated 70,000 gang members and people that were running the streets and ruling the country. And then he took out of the, the, the country, he destroyed the, the, um, what's called the Federal Bank. He took down the Federal Bank. Every country has a Federal Bank, or it's called, uh, what's the other word for it? Federal Reserve. We have a Federal Reserve. It's not the government. It's a separate company, but they dictate to the government and everybody else what the money is going to be. They loan the money to the government. They loan the money to, you know, like, and so they keep interest. They keep interest. We'll never pay it off. The only way to do it is say, you're not going to operate like this anymore. I've got a great story about that, but I'll tell that next time I preach. Maybe. Maybe. If my wife, if my wife lets me, <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> Let's pray. Are you okay? You still love me? Good. What's that? Okay. Thank you, Jesus, for this day. Oh, thank you for this day, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing in our lives. I just pray, God, right now. Every person in this place, God, you would just seal upon their hearts the truth. The truth of what the truth is, and that is you. You're the truth. You're the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way. We just pray, God, that you would just help us. You'll teach us. You'll grow us. You'll help us to make a stand. And just to be truthful in everything that we say and do. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen.